Divers, coming to you from Studio D, the Deep Dive Podcast proudly presents Hollywood Hype, a series that looks at the gimmicks, tie-ins, and publicity stunts that lured unsuspecting patrons into movie theaters. I'm Tom Feeney, two-time regional Emmy Award-winning producer and writer for Wang's Chop Movie Magazine. Ah, tis the season. It's that time of year when our thoughts turn to things like dangerous blizzards, eggnog hangovers, and seasonal affective disorder. Oh, and the holidays as well. And nothing really screams Christmas, like an old-fashioned axe-wielding Saint Nick hacking up folks like they were wood for the fireplace. This week, Hollywood Hype turns its unblinking eye towards the most controversial Christmas movie of all time, Silent Night, Deadly Night. These days, the idea of a serial killer in a Santa suit might seem rather silly to you. Or, at the very least, not terribly shocking. However, back in 1984, a veritable blizzard of bad publicity surrounded a movie with that very premise. Silent Night, Deadly Night managed to fill the stockings of both critics and the easily outraged with lumps of coal. This is the story of that film and the controversy surrounding it. T'was the night before Christmas, when all through the house, not a creature was stirring, not even a mouse. The stockings were hung by the chimney with care, in hopes that St. Nicholas soon would be there. The movie tells the tale of a young boy named Billy Chapman. The film begins with a traumatic event during Christmas when Billy witnesses his parents being murdered by a man dressed as Santa Claus. This traumatic incident leaves a, you know, lasting impact on Billy, as you would imagine, leaving him to associate Christmas with fear and violence. As he grows up in an orphanage, Billy's fear of Christmas and Santa Claus intensifies, Uh, not to mention Catholic nuns. When he eventually gets a job at a toy store, he is asked to play the role of Santa Claus during the holiday season. The combination of his traumatic past and the pressure of embodying the Christmas figure leads Billy towards a mental breakdown. He starts to act out violently, punishing those he deems as naughty in a grisly and brutal manner. Now, to be fair, it's not a particularly good movie, objectively speaking. However, it is a terrific example of the 80s slasher movie based on a holiday genre that was so popular with younger moviegoers and so reviled by everyone else. The film's inception was initiated by executive producer Scott Scheind, who at the time welcomed screenplay submissions from the public. Among these submissions was a short story titled He Sees You When You're Sleeping, authored by a Harvard University student. Schein found merit in the concept of a killer Santa Claus and reached out to writer Michael Hickey to develop a screenplay 
based on the short story. Hickey agreed, and upon completion, the screenplay was sent to TriStar Pictures, who not only approved it, but also agreed to finance and distribute the film. Now, TriStar Pictures was no fly-by-night independent distributor. They were new at the time, but the studio has since released such classic films as Sleepless in Seattle, Philadelphia, Jumanji, and Jerry Maguire. Originally titled Slay Ride, as in S-L-A-Y, get it? During production, the producers wanted to hire a promising young director and actually considered the now legendary Sam Raimi. TriStar favored Charles E. Sellier Jr., known for producing G-rated fare like The Life and Times of Grizzly Adams. Now, that doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me, but whatever. And despite disagreements on that choice, TriStar insisted, for some reason, on hiring Sellier. Filming occurred from March through April of 1983 in Utah, with the crew racing to capture exterior shots before the melting snow disappeared. Various buildings served as locations, including a renovated abandoned schoolhouse for the orphanage scenes. Now, director Sellier, a devout Mormon, felt uncomfortable filming the grisly murder sequences, so editor Michael Spence stepped in for those scenes. The cast primarily comprised local actors from Utah, with lead star Robert Brian Wilson, who played Billy at age 18, having no prior acting experience. And post-production saw TriStar renaming the film from Slay Ride to Silent Night, Deadly Night. Perry Botkin composed the score by watching the film and creating music in real time from a Betamax copy. Go figure and graphic designer Bert Klieger crafted the theatrical release poster featuring Santa Claus holding a double-bit axe with the tagline, You've made it through Halloween. Now try and survive Christmas. And also, he knows when you've been naughty. And the producers and TriStar were, perhaps naively, untroubled by the whole killer Santa Claus theme. But... Concerns arose regarding the portrayal of the Catholic Church, leading to a limited release in the predominantly Protestant Midwest before wider distribution in the Catholic Northeast. The film's theatrical release date was set for November 9, 1984, near the beginning of the Christmas season. Needless to say, the release didn't go as well as planned. Even before the film sledded into theaters, there was controversy regarding the movie's ad campaign. This holiday season, there's a man out there whose only gift is a nightmare. His suit is red, his beard is white, but the twinkle in his eye is a little strange. Don't let your children near him. And don't, I repeat, don't tell him you've been good all year if you haven't. You've made it through Halloween. Now try and survive Christmas. Silent Night, Deadly Night. Rated R, under 17, not admitted without parent. The film opened in about 400 theaters, primarily in the Midwest and East Coast. But immediately, there were protests outside theaters. At one theater in Brooklyn, New York, protesters carried signs that read, Santa's not a hitman, and deck the halls with holly, not bodies. Uh, Not, you know, I'm not saying they were clever or anything, but, you know. Now, a group in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, calling themselves Citizens Against Movie Madness, picketed theaters in that city. And some theater owners refused to screen the film at all after the controversy became public. Now, when its first weekend of release, Silent Night, Deadly Night grossed nearly one and a half million dollars in those 400 theaters. Now, one and a half million may not sound great, but that actually was not a bad showing. Consider that 2023's Barbie opened in 10 times the number of theaters. Barbie cost almost 300 million dollars to both make and market. Silent Night, Deadly Night was made for only 
$750,000. Now, that wouldn't cover the catering budget on Barbie. So, all things considered, Silent Night, Deadly Night had a decent opening. And you might think the controversy would drive people to the theaters to see what all the fuss was about. That did not happen. The movie's box office fell 45% the following weekend. And the incredibly negative reviews certainly didn't help matters. The new advertising campaign plays up the earlier controversy about the film when angry parents picketed theaters where it played and the critics took offense. And Silent Night, Deadly Night now has the distinction of joining I Spit on Your Grave as one of the two most contemptible films I've seen. And I don't mean to think it's campy. It really is quite awful. But the producer claims critics had other motives for reviewing the film. They were coming off an enormous amount of publicity on that picture. And I think that they knew that by reviewing that picture on their show, they would get higher ratings. And Ira Richard Barmack produced it. You people have nothing to be proud of, even if you made a few bucks off of all the negative publicity. Your profits truly are blood money. Shame on you, Siskel, and shame on you, Ebert, because I don't believe you. I think it was the height of hypocrisy for them to take that attitude. If they genuinely were horrified at the picture, they know very well that the most effective thing they could have done is to not review the picture. And yes, we even see Santa give one little girl a bloody knife as a gift and threaten another little girl with physical punishment as he sits on his lap. You might think that it would be funny, Roger, or par it's played as quite sick in the film. I find it so amazing that if you say a guy gets into a Santa Claus suit and he's driven over the line, that people don't on the face of it see why that's funny. Silent Night, Deadly Night opens in 93 theaters tomorrow in North and South Carolina and in upstate New York with plans for a wider release already in the works. Silent Night, Deadly Night was supposed to expand the number of theaters throughout the holiday season. But the controversy, the criticism, and the declining box office numbers made TriStar Pictures executives very, very nervous. Two weeks after its initial release, TriStar pulled the film from theaters and halted plans to expand its release. But was it all the holiday hubbub around Silent Night, Deadly Night that led to its declining box office? The best answer is yes. And no. Well, maybe. See, what really got parents upset in the first place was the original television and print marketing for the movie, especially the television ad. most talked about film of the decade. No, no! The movie that shocked America, ah! outraged Hollywood, and frightened the government. The movie they tried to ban. You've read about it. Ah! You've heard about it. Now you can see it in all its terrifying horror. Silent Night, Deadly Night. Rated R, under 17, not admitted without parent. Yes, Virginia, there is a Santa Claus, and he's got an axe. That ad ran in prime time on TV. Parents reported their children having panic attacks after viewing the ad. And of course, dime store psychologists were all over the place saying kids could be permanently affected by these ads. And after getting calls from outraged viewers, some TV stations chose to run the ads later in the evening or not at all. The abrupt disruption of the film's ad campaign may have been the real culprit behind the second week's drop in revenue. TriStar washed its hands of the whole affair, and that would have been it, except, well, the film's producer made a deal with a small independent distributor, Aquarius Films Releasing, to bring Santa back. Except the deal fell through, and the re-release never happened. And thus ends our story, right? Oh, not on your jingle bells. Fun fact. Did you know that Silent Night, Deadly Night was not the first motion picture to depict a nasty Saint Nick? That dubious honor goes to a movie that was released a few years earlier. This Christmas... Santa's going to make everyone happy. The grown-ups. And the kids. 
Christmas evil. The non-believers... <laughs> And the screamers. <laughs> and this Christmas, you better believe in Santa, or he'll slay you. Merry Christmas, Frank. Christmas Evil, the night he dropped in. Yes, 1980's Christmas Evil, a.k.a. You Better Watch Out, came and went with very little fanfare. Likely because the independent production didn't have the marketing muscle that TriStar had when promoting Silent Night, Deadly Night. So, bigger studio, bigger media budget, bigger lump of coal. Mm. But hey, don't feel too bad for poor old Silent Night. It took the home video world by storm when it was released on VHS and Betamax. Oh, if you don't know what those are, ask your parents. Much more recently in 2017, Shout Factory released a truly spectacular 4K two-disc Blu-ray of Silent Night, Deadly Night with not only the theatrical edition, but an unrated cut as well. It's got lots of commentaries, trailers, and a making-of documentary. And, believe it or not, there have been five, yes, five films in the Silent Night, Deadly Night franchise. There's a part two. There's a part three subtitled Better Watch Out. There's part four, Initiation. And part five, The Toy Maker. Watch at your own risk. And last but not least, Silent Night, Deadly Night got the reboot treatment back in 2012 with Silent Night minus the Deadly Night, which, by the way, as a movie, is leaps and bounds better than the original. Check it out. Now, the original garnered nothing but criticism and controversy in its early years of existence. Now, it's considered a prime example of a beloved movie genre and a bloody good piece of Christmas nostalgia for those of us who lived through the 1980s. Merry Christmas. Thanks for listening. If this is the first time you've heard this podcast, check out our past episodes, available on almost all podcast providers, and subscribe so you don't miss a single one. And if you like what you hear, write a review. We'd love to know what you think. Or you can drop us a line at the deep dive podcast at gmail.com or on our Facebook, Instagram, or Twitter, now X, feeds. You can find links to those and our awesome t-shirt store in the bio of our Instagram page. All clips used in this podcast are meant for educational purposes only and not to infringe on existing copyrights. Hollywood Hype is part of the Deep Dive Podcast family and a production of Automaton Studios.